Thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this video. The Mevo Core is not just a compact Micro Four Thirds camera in a box. It's actually a complete multi-camera live streaming solution. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. The Mevo cameras just got a massive upgrade. You might remember Mevo from their Mevo Start cameras. I did a demo of the Mevo Start 3 pack on this channel a little while ago. The Mevo Core, however, takes us to a whole new level with the ability to use the same Mevo Livestream app with the new Mevo Core cameras that use interchangeable Micro Four Thirds lenses. On the front, we have the Micro Four Thirds lens mount. This is where you can detach the lens and add in other lenses with different focal lengths. We also have a tally light on the top and bottom so you can easily see when this camera is in program or preview. Along the top and the sides, we have these quarter 20 mounts for mounting this to tripods or mounting other accessories to the camera as well. The bottom and the sides have them on the center here and on the top is a little bit farther back to make room for the microphone, which is on top. On the back, we have the power button, which is also the battery indicator. Here it's showing four lights, which is fully charged. I've also got two USB-C ports and an eighth inch audio input. This is the main USB-C port for giving it power. And this lets you connect other devices to this camera over USB-C. Under this little flap are two more ports. There is a micro SD card slot so you can record to the internal SD card. There's also an HDMI port here. In addition to the physical output of HDMI, this camera can also output video signal over NDI or SRT once it's on a network. You can actually give it a network connection two different ways. You can either connect this to a Wi-Fi hotspot or use a USB-C to Ethernet adapter and give it a wired network connection for an even more reliable connection. Couple other highlights of the camera. It's got a built-in battery, which they claim that has a six hour battery life. If you do plug in an ethernet adapter in the USB-C port, you can give it a wired network connection, which will give you much faster speeds and much more reliable NDI and SRT connections. And you can even get a USB-C to power over ethernet adapter to plug in. And then you can actually power the camera as well as give it a network connection all over a single cable. As far as Wi-Fi goes, it does have Wi-Fi 6E, so it's able to connect to fast and new access points. But let's get these set up on a tripod and connected so I can actually show you what they look like. For this demo, I'll set up these cameras for a simple live streaming setup with a main angle of myself and a side angle showing what's on my desk in front of me. Once these are set up and turned on, you'll need to connect them to the app so you can control them. The app is available for Android, iPhone, and iPad. I'll set it up on this iPad so that I have a nice large screen to work with here. So I've actually gone ahead and replaced my main camera that I use for this video with the Mevo camera. That one is plugged in over ethernet. So it's showing up here now in the app ready to connect and you can see it's connected over ethernet. This secondary camera, which isn't mounted yet is not plugged into anything. So it's just powered on with its own battery power and that's showing up here ready for setup. So let's go ahead and just connect to this one first. Now we see the video feed pop up here and now we're gonna go ahead and set up this one. Over Wi-Fi, we have two options. We have either the option to connect this to the Wi-Fi hotspot in my studio, or I can actually connect the iPad to this directly, but then I have to use the LTE signal in the iPad in order to do a stream. Since I do have Wi-Fi in the studio, which is on the same network as the ethernet, I'm gonna go ahead and connect to that Wi-Fi. You can generate a QR code to auto connect to your Wi-Fi, which is a lot easier than typing in the credentials manually. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this one that I'm using here down below. So I'll go ahead and tap scan QR code. It wants to access the camera and then it's using the iPad camera to scan the code. So I can go ahead and scan the code and it's now wanting to connect to the Wi-Fi that it found. Once your cameras are connected, you might notice that a firmware update is required. So go ahead and let's run that right now and let this install. Okay, once the firmware is on updating, we can now connect to this camera. Let's go ahead and click connect. Now we've got two cameras connected and we're ready to drop into the live stream control room. If you do want to connect additional Mevo start cameras, this would be a good time, but you can always get back to this menu later, even after you've dropped into a live stream. So we'll go ahead and click continue and we're dropped into the main console of the Mevo multicam app. I'm going to go ahead and put this camera up on the side here so that it's a little better angle. Once the cameras are connected, you'll probably want to focus them. So I'm going to go ahead and long press on the picture here, go into image control. And this takes us into the control interface for controlling the focus and exposure and other settings of the cameras. I can just go ahead and double tap on my face and it'll do a quick autofocus and find a focus lock on my face. We can go tap over to the side camera and do the same thing here. I probably want to focus it somewhere in the middle of this iPad so I can put my hand here and then double tap on my hand and it'll do a quick focus seek and lock onto my hand. One of the really nice things about having micro four thirds lenses is that you get a lot of different options of focal lengths. So for example, I could use this 100 or 300 for a really zoomed in shot, or I could use the 45 to 175, 
which is actually a power zoom lens, which means I can actually zoom in from the app. On the side camera here, I have the 14 to 42 zoom lens, which is a power zoom lens. So I can actually go into the zoom tab here and then scroll and zoom in to get a closer angle of what's on the table here. There's a lot of different micro four thirds lenses to choose from. So you have a lot of different options for different focal lengths and different quality of lenses as well. The lens that's in the main shot that you're seeing here is a lens that I normally use to film my videos since I normally use a micro four thirds camera. And that's the Lumix 12 to 35 zoom lens, which I like a lot. It's a great lens. If you need to get a closer view of what's in your camera, you can actually press this little full screen button and now you've got a much larger view of your camera. And again, you can double tap to focus and it should do a quick little focus lock and then lock focus onto my face here. You've also got full control over aperture and exposure settings. So I can go ahead and lock in the aperture at f2.9, which is the lowest this one goes at this focal length. And for this one, we can drop this to the lowest as well. Over in the exposure tab, we can choose either complete auto exposure or lock in the shutter speed or complete manual. I like to lock in the shutter speed at 1 60th and that way I know I get good motion blur for live streams. So I'll go ahead and set the shutter speed to 1 60th and leave it on auto exposure. And that's gonna auto adjust the ISO to properly expose this shot. We'll go ahead and do this for my main camera as well. Setting, setting the shutter speed to 1 60th, leaving the exposure at zero. And now I've got good motion blur here, but it's able to auto adjust the ISO. If I did want manual control, let's say I thought this was a little bit too bright, I could drop into the manual here and then either lower or raise the ISO. I could drop it down to 100 and it'll get a little bit darker. It's a little bit too dark, so let's go ahead and leave it back at 200. So you can go ahead and finish fiddling with your shots in here, again, using the power zoom feature if your lens supports power zoom. There are only a couple of power zoom micro four thirds lenses, so I'll make sure to leave links to those below. But most of the lenses I have are not power zoom, they just have a manual zoom ring. Once you're happy with your shots, you can click done and you're dropped back into the main console of the app. So at this point in the video, since I actually did replace my main camera with the Mevo Core, everything you're seeing from this angle is recorded from the Mevo Core camera. I do have this running into my rack where I'm recording the HDMI output of the camera. And that's what you're seeing in this YouTube video as you're watching me live. Which brings me to another really important feature. The cameras are actually 4K cameras and I am getting a 4K HDMI signal out of the camera into my 4K recorder. The video feed that you're getting in the iPad is 1080. So I can go ahead and over, go over to the input quality and I can see what quality the cameras are input at. It actually auto detected 480p probably because of the network speed at some point. So I can go ahead and up this to 1080p high because one of my cameras is wired and the other one is Wi-Fi on a dedicated access point I have here. This does mean all the cameras will reconnect. So let's go ahead and choose that option and then back out of here and they're gonna go ahead and reset and reconnect into the app. And now we're back and connected in at 1080, which is a much higher quality signal. Of course, this is only gonna work if your Wi-Fi or wired networks are fast enough. So I'm hoping this works well here for this demo. So now that everything's connected, you can either go live from the app or record directly into the iPad as well. There's also the new out option, which is what enables either webcam outputs or NDI outputs from this. You can just go ahead and click live and then choose what platforms to stream on, let's say, you can log into your YouTube account here, which goes through the nice login flow that you would expect. Once you're logged in, you can go ahead and create a new event or just go live. Let's say test stream. We will make this unlisted so I don't blast all of my subscribers. We can schedule it for a certain date and time and go and click save. Once you've chosen the stream to push to, you can go ahead and change your stream settings. I'm gonna push my luck here and stream at 1080p high. And you have the option of recording to whatever local device you're actually streaming from as well, which is nice to have a backup. Once we're ready, we can go ahead and click go live and it's gonna start pushing the stream to YouTube. Now we're live, we're recording, and I can go ahead and close this out. And now I can go ahead and switch between different angles as well as add in graphics. For example, I can click the plus, I can go add graphics. I can add full screen overlays like this might be useful for a starting soon screen, for example. Now I can go ahead and tap this to bring it on the screen and we see a starting soon in the program. I can also create a picture in picture layout so I could choose which one do I wanna have inside the picture in picture frame. We'll choose the main angle here. I can drag it around. I can give it uh, different aspect ratios like let's make it a little circle, choose the border color, let's make the border a little bit thinner, things like that. 
go ahead and click done. And there is the overlay of the little picture in picture. And now I can just bring this on and off the stream like a graphic with the Mevo start cameras. The Mevo core cameras will let you use nice lenses with long telephoto lenses or macro lenses, while the Mevo start cameras will let you put these in places that the larger box cameras wouldn't fit. And since everything is battery powered, it's still an entirely wireless rig anyway. Okay, and now I've got four cameras connected. I've got two Mevo cores, and I've got two Mevo starts. And this really shows you the quality difference between the Micro Four Thirds lenses compared to the Mevo start. This angle that you're seeing now is the Micro Four Thirds camera, and this is the Mevo start. It is a lot wider, but I can also go in and zoom in in this as well. So I can go ahead and pinch to crop in and maybe, maybe make it look a little bit more like my main angle here. Pinch a little bit farther and click done, and that actually saves it cropped in. Okay, but there's still a few things I would like to point out. We are seeing the footage from the Mevo start cameras, but the audio that we're hearing so far has been recorded directly into my external audio recorder that I use for filming. So I wanna give you a quick demo of the sound difference between using the built-in microphones from the Mevo core cameras and an external microphone that you can connect into the Mevo core. The cameras do have an eighth inch microphone input, so you can run either an external mic or an external audio interface over that connection as well. So in the app, I can go ahead and actually change what audio is being used for the stream. Here you can see I'm not using audio from the two starts, but both of the Mevo core cameras are running audio, which is actually not at all what I want for a live stream. I really only want one of them. So I can go ahead and click mute on this one. And the 7CH camera is my main camera angle. Now keep in mind, this is behind my teleprompter, so it's not gonna be the best audio quality with the built-in mic. If I click the gear, you can see it's actually auto-detected the fact that I've plugged in an external audio interface and it's using line level from the external audio interface. This is actually the external mic that I'm using to film this video and the recorder is running into the camera, which is the same way I actually film with my normal setup. But I can go ahead and check this box and that'll force it to use the internal microphones of the camera instead. And you can see it has internal audio processing, which will either let you choose between speech or music. Since this is just me talking, I'm gonna leave it at speech. So this is a recording from the Mevo core camera using the built-in microphones. It has a three mic array with noise cancellation and I'm in my studio now, which is mostly quiet, but the rack of gear over here is making some humming noise. And also this camera is behind my teleprompter. So it's a lot of the audio is actually blocked. Let's quickly switch over to the audio from the side camera, which is a lot closer to me. Now you're hearing the audio from the camera to the side of me, which is not great placement for a microphone, but it is a lot closer to me and not behind glass like the teleprompter camera. One thing to keep in mind is that the closer you get to the camera, the better the audio will be. Now you're hearing the audio from the external microphone plugged into the camera. You will always get a better result using an external microphone that you can bring a lot closer to your talent. This microphone is just out of the frame up here and it's pointed directly at my face. Another great option is to use a wireless microphone, which you can clip on your shirt and then not worry about having to stay in just the right spot. In addition to connecting the cameras with the multicam app, you can also output video from the HDMI port. And the iPad app, in addition to streaming to YouTube or other platforms, can actually also output NDI. And that means you can integrate these with a bunch of other interesting production workflows. For example, I can pull the video stream from the app up on the monitor over here. And now as I'm live cutting between different angles, I can see that the NDI feed over on the monitor is integrated into the rest of my broadcast workflow. There's a lot more to learn about NDI, so check out the rest of my videos on my channel if you would like to learn more. This has been your first quick look at the new Mevo core cameras from Logitech. I'm super excited about the possibilities these open up for all sorts of portable multi-camera live streaming solutions. There's a lot more to go into on the Multicam app, so if you have any questions, leave a comment down below or join me on one of my weekly live streams on Sundays to ask your questions live. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.